So I've got an absolutely massive mailbag here. I was going to split this into two as again. And actually I'm about two months ahead of mailbag videos. Two months. So I'm going to do two in one here and do one massive one. There's a few interesting things in here. Well, I hope so anyway. Stick around to find out. A couple of Arduino Pro Micros. The difference between a Pro Micro and a Pro Mini is that this has got a different process on it. It's a 32U, I think it is. These allow you to use these things as a keyboard or mouse because they can simulate a USB device. So I've got some of these because I was thinking about simulating USB device. I won't go into detail. It's to say it's stop something going to sleep. Oh, what the hell, I'll tell you. So the computer at work is upgraded recently and they've changed the system so the thing locks itself every, I don't know, probably three or four minutes, maybe five minutes even, I'm quite sure, but it doesn't last very long before it actually locks itself and you have to log back in again. It's a real pain. It's not actually kicking you out, it just goes to sleep and uh, locks the screen, you know. It's just really annoying because I often go away for a few minutes and come back and it's locked again. It happens a lot. I do that quite a bit. I'm actually going to make a little mouse wiggler. So the idea of this is to program this so it acts like a mouse and just have it so it moves like one pixel at a time or something. And just moves the mouse left and right by one pixel to try and keep the computer awake. That's the plan. It may or may not work. I don't know. Hopefully it does. And you can blame Julian Yolette for this. Click subscribe right now. Quick. Before you forget. Next thing. These. Probably see them fairly well through here I suppose. These are micro dots. No, not micro dots. <laughs> it's a spy movie. These are carbon pads which are meant for repairing keyboards and keypads. Like, it could be like a remote control, things like your TV. You've got these little carbon pads in them often which conduct and they touch between two traces on the circuit board and that's what makes it register a button press. And they do wear out. And this is a little assortment which has got a whole bunch of different sizes in it. If I ever need to repair something which has these pads in, I could just literally just get one of these, remove the original pad which is worn out, glue one of these new ones in and that should be fixed. And these aren't even that expensive. I should have bought two packs really. Yeah, but links down below for these things too. Anything I can give you a link for will be down below. So check those out. Right, this is a little test ball for using on VNAs. I'm pretty sure I've actually got one of these before, but do you know I can find it now? Anyway, I've got another one. <laughs> I've got so much stuff. So the idea of this is that you can actually use this on your VNA and test that it's producing these patterns. It's like a demo ball thing, really. Well, it's RF demo kit, there you go. So you've got low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass, notch filter, and you've got different uh, Smith chart representations as well for different types. And you've got these little cables here which you can hook, plug into it, these little UFL connectors. Attenuators, so you've got through there, it should be no attenuation. Attenuate 5 dB and attenuate 10 dB, apparently. So, nice. And there's another little Smith chart thing here too, which is doing something. I think it's just an example, I don't think it's actually doing anything. I'm not sure what the story is of that, it's actually got a point marked there and there and there. I don't know. I think it's just showing where those references are. But yeah, so I got this because I thought I could be good for testing my VNA out and just playing around with things. And sometimes it's nice to have a comparison for things. And these are really cheap. The reason I got that board is because I recently got an SSA 3021X Plus and it's now a VNA. So when you have a spectrum analyzer or a network analyzer and all that, you'll often want to put a DC block on the front of it, which is what these are. So it's apparently DC to 6 gigahertz. I don't know if that's true or not, we'll maybe potentially find out. This just blocks DC, usually only quite limited. I think these are only rated for like 50 volts and all that. And the idea is obviously in connectors. And you put it in series on the front panel and this gives you some kind of DC protection. A lot of spectrum analyzers cannot tolerate any DC whatsoever. It will just blow the thing up. You put DC into the front of a spectrum analyzer, a lot of them will just go bang. And you, you lose your front end and that's it. So it's always a good idea to make sure you're running a DC block. So I picked up a couple of these because I need a, a couple of these things on different devices. So one is my new spectrum analyzer, which does actually have a 50 volt tolerant input apparently, according to the front panel. But I'm going to put these on anyway. And the other one's my CMU200, which it does have a DC block on it right now, which is a uh, BNC type. And I wanted to uh, put an N type on there because that's what the chemistry is actually on the front. Can never be too safe. Always use protection. All that packaging for four capacitors. Thanks, Cinema 14. That's brilliant. And oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I ordered and it's not in stock. Seriously, there's dozens and dozens of parts which aren't in stock. Ugh. I thought that was last year. USB 3 to USB C adapter and a card reader. So we've got this. 
I ruined it for you, didn't I? Did that too quickly? Put it back on. Yeah, good. Now you, now you can enjoy yourself. There you go. <laughs> anyway, this has got um, contact, compact flash and an MS card slot. That side. TFs and an SD card here, so and obviously standard SD card there. So it's like a multiple. Yes, I wanted another card reader because I actually wanted to adapt what I've already got from my system, and I always like to have spares. If my current card reader fails, the only other one I've got, which is an Orico one, I've actually got an old Orico one, which is black. I've had that for a couple of years, probably maybe three years. Works really well, nice and fast. I put a new Orico one, which I showed in a mailbag. It's like a silver one, and it's like desktop mounted. It's got like a nice sloping front. Looks really nice. It's a tenth the speed of the black one. Only on the card reader though. The USB ports are fine. I can plug the black one into the silver one and get good speeds on the card reader off the black one. But if I try and use the SD card slots on the silver one, they're really slow. I pulled it apart now. Look, couldn't see anything wrong. So it's just weird. Anyway, I want another one. Always want to have decent spares. U Green is actually one of the brands I trust. There's a few brands I trust. U Green and Basis are two of them. They're both quite good brands. Everything I've ever bought from them has always been pretty good. All right, start to get into the bigger stuff now. This one's a bit squashed. Hopefully it doesn't matter. So this is a battery charger for... What brand was that? My wife bought a camera. I can't remember what brand it is now. And it takes these batteries. And I wanted to get a spare... I mean, I don't have a charger. Because currently right now the batteries charge through the camera. So you have to have them in the camera to charge them up. Because you don't actually have a standalone charger. So I wanted to get this two-bay charger here. There's the battery here. All right, so it's not an original, it's an aftermarket thing. BLS 50 is the original battery. I did actually get a battery before, so she had a, a second battery for it. No, the originally came with one battery, that's what you got. But I wanted to get a standalone charger and a spare battery unit as well, so she can charge batteries up using this charger instead. So now she's got plenty of batteries and a standalone charger for her camera, so she'll be happy. I'm actually tempted to nick her camera to try using it for this, in case it's any good for doing videos. Don't know, might be. But then she might tell me off. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, four DC blocks. These ones are B and C type. I already have a B and C block. Let's go and get it for you. So this one I actually have my CMU 200 all the time. This one here. All right, this one's supposed to be 4 gigahertz apparently. It's actually got naming and stuff on it. So it probably is a reasonable one. And it's obviously an AliExpress special. But it might be fine. And it's supposed to be 6 gigahertz. Yeah, we'll see. Two of those, two BNC ones, because I only had a couple of these, and I already used them all. I actually ran out, I didn't have any spare left, so... Get DC blocks, people. Get protected. Don't forget, when you see Julian... Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Tell him off. Or say hi. Say hi to Julian, probably better. <laughs> so this is an iOS Components one. What do we have here? I realised I was actually a bit short on voltage regulators because it's a project I want to work on recently and it turns out I didn't actually have any negative voltage regulators not the ones I wanted anyway so these ones here are 7908, so there's 8 volt negative regulators got some 7905s which are negative 5 volt regulators now I've got these ones I can actually do this project I was working on so I actually tried to do a live stream last weekend I had a power failure initially which completely ruined things but then I did finally get the live stream done later that evening, 12 hours later. I was trying to work on a project and I needed negative regulators to be able to do that. I didn't have them. I didn't have them. I thought I had some. Turned out I didn't. Now I've got some. And me being me, I might have ordered a lot of them. Just saying. One of the things I discovered recently is that these negative regulators are actually getting really hard to get. It's like they're not made anymore. So I actually had to do a lot of hunting around trying to find them. A lot of places said, no, can't get them anymore. You know, no stock. Not made anymore, obsolete. It's like, wow, really? I've got a stock of them coming because I wanted to make sure that next time I need some, I can actually get the things. Obviously these days it's all going to surface mount and so these kinds of through-hole devices like this aren't getting used as much because it's all going surface mount and using the, the PCB as a heatsink, which only goes so far. But anyway, if you're looking for negative regulators, I've got them all. Okay, so these are from Harold from CMI Zapper. Didn't order with him recently. Been meaning to get a few things recently. 
So one of these is the Chipmunk HDMI tester. And so you can plug this in the HDMI port and actually just confirm signals and stuff with you. Tell you there's a bit of a guide here. Right, there's a guide, how to use it. So if you want to test the HDMI port, you can plug this in and test it out. And we've also got a tire CS in here as well. A couple of those. See those little balls there? So these are tire CS with 15 inch. And it, so that's for those models which have the issues with the GPU dying. I've used these boards many times to repair them. And I've done videos about that before, but I need a couple more because I actually ran out, so I need a couple more for stock. Then it's got a battery port tester. So you can use for testing your battery ports on your computers. It's got a couple of adapters in it as well. So you can test the cables and things like that too. And you've got the known good screen, which is for testing, well, simulating a screen. So basically what you do is you plug this in in place of the screen. You've got LVDS connectors here, different types. And also, this particular kit came with cables as well. We supplied these cables. These are pulled from other screens, right? So these, you can't get these new. They're just pulled from old computers. And you have to, you know, it depends on the availability of these. You might have to supply your own or source your own ones. Plugging this cable between this board and your laptop logic board, which in this case it works on these machines. And you can simulate a screen. So also, it will test if we've got the correct signals you're getting, you should have going to your screen. So your various data signals, voltages, things like that, and this will simulate a screen. So if you're not sure if your screen is bad, you can plug this in instead and actually test it out. But uh, I purchased these, these, are no, these aren't a sponsorship or anything. These are things I wanted to get, so. But Harold's a good guy to deal with, and he makes some really good stuff. He's a pretty clever guy. So if you're interested in MacBook stuff, go and check his stuff out. CMIZapper.com. Go there. Now you've got some more capacitors. I'll just restocking a few things. The few which I was a little bit low on, and these ones aren't too bad. 3.3 microfarad, 63 volt. Sweet, because my drawers, 3.3s. It's getting a bit low. Yeah, seriously, it's getting a bit low. This is quite a big package, this one. I think I know what's in here already, though. I'm pretty sure it's a local item. It is an Apple battery. This is for my MacBook Pro, or one of them anyway. It's the Retina version, and the battery's been behaving a bit strangely. I don't think it's bad as such, but it's just not reliable. It seems to drain quite quickly sometimes. It's just being a bit strange. So I decided to get another battery. This one's supposedly brand new original. We'll see. <laughs> this is the battery that goes in that. Now, I've replaced other MacBook batteries in the past. Right now, quick, before you forget. I'll move this out of the way. I've replaced other batteries in the past for other MacBooks which aren't this format. I mean, I'm like 2011 style MacBooks I'm talking about. And this is the newer style which get glued in. So it's going to be fun changing it. I've actually done videos repairing that computer. I ended up replacing the entire logic board in the end, but I did the other repairs to it. The logic board ended up being irreparable, I couldn't fix it. So I managed to source another one. Last package. This has got tape on it, so I'm going to have to use a real knife in this case. Some might argue that I should use a real knife all the time anyway. But not many people open the packages with a round knife today. It's a feature. Not a bug. Got a power brick. A very light power brick that doesn't weigh very much. 15 volts at 4 amps. It doesn't weigh much, I don't trust that. We have a hot shoe kind of mount adapter, quarter inch adapter. So I decided to do some work on my lighting around here because I've not been happy with it. I've always felt like I've got shadows from this side because I've got no lighting coming from this direction over here, right? I've never been happy with that and I wanted to do something with it. I've got lots of lights like up here. I've got three lights across here and I've got another one over there and I've got ones up above. But from this side it looks a bit dark to me. So I wanted to play with my lighting some more so I thought I'd get some more lights. Unfortunately these things aren't cheap. Decent lighting is not cheap. I mean, I don't know. These are still... I don't know budget lights I suppose, but it's an LED 8U so it's supposed to be, yeah, unfortunately there's no display in it. So the one I'm using right now up here is actually really good light. I really wish I bought more of them. I've got two, one's out in my other lab when I record out there, the really rare occasions I record out there, and I'm actually tending to bring it in here. But I still need a light out there when I do actually do things out there. And this one's a very basic light. This is, you know, there's no displays on it to tell you what's actually doing, that sort of stuff. It shouldn't matter too much. Battery packs, I've got battery packs but I don't intend to use the batteries. I'm going to be using the 12 volt side here. Let's get this really, really suspiciously light pack. Plug this in and see what happens, shall we? 300 milliwatts just driving the pack. You appear to be blinded in awesomeness. Okay, one of the musty batteries then. That didn't do anything. Two is power. Okay. So that's actually not too bad. 
So let's just fold this in a little bit so you can maybe these will probably end up coming off. <laughs> Likely to take them off, we'll see. So let's try this. So this is the colour temperature. So it's got two individual colour temperatures basically, right? So you can adjust each set of LEDs individually. I get it in here, I don't think you can see it or not. I get them getting turned up just right. So you can see there's just see one row there. Okay. And then get the other one. And there's the other row. Turn this one down. See? So there's two columns of different colour LEDs. And you change the colour temperature by mixing them together. Now my other unit, my better one, has got a display on there which tells you what the colour temperature actually is. Obviously they've worked out what it is for the brightness levels and things like that and it displays it. So it's actually a nice one. I'll set it to 5000 Kelvin and off I go. This one here is obviously very different. What it's actually got on the back is 5600 Kelvin and 3200 Kelvin. So basically I'm going to turn this one all the way up to 5.6 and then probably bring this one up a little bit to change it very slightly to make it slightly yellower. And so, you know, the idea is to have this side over here somewhere and try and put some more lighting from like this, this direction. That's one there. I mean, if I had my hand like this, let me just turn it off. Let's do it like this. Like this turn it off. Look at the difference. Just having light over here in this corner. It's made so much difference just doing that. Exactly what I want to do is have a light over here in this corner. And that makes such a big difference to the way it looks. I guess we have a lot of those shadows. I probably have to tweak it a little bit, maybe get the brightness down a bit and that sort of stuff. I don't need full brightness probably. I might try half brightness in both colours. I'll set both half brightness, it's probably about 4 or 6 or something like that. Yeah, you can see it's a bit yellow. So I'll have to play around with this thing and figure out what colours and stuff I'm going to set up on it. I don't think I need to have it all the way up. I just need something over here to get rid of the shadows. That's looking pretty good actually. That's going to do the job nicely. Now I can stick this up on the wall mount it on a panel behind me or something like that and just have it sitting there as a nice big general light because it's quite large should help reduce reflections and shadows that's definitely working quite well even without that get rid of it so it's facing the way face it back yeah look at that difference i mean this is a cheap light don't be mixed up by that this is a cheap light but they're not cheap to buy <laughs> okay i'm not sure this one was now but trying to get something of this kind of size which gives the adjustments that, like this on it I mean, the one I had before was much nicer. It's the same kind of setup, it has intermingled colours, but it's automatic, you can just set what colour temperature you want, and it, it's there. This one is also going to be a bit more messing around and stuff like that. Having this set up would be great once I've got that done. I'm not sure about the power supply though. The power supply feels awfully chintzy. Might need to change that to something else. Yes, we'll see. So check out the other videos down below. Subscribe if you're already subscribed. Pay the small account over there if you want me to buy best test kit effects and do videos about. Catch you later. Maybe buy some better video lights. That'd be nice too.